So like everything in dentistry, when we think about jams, preventing it from happening to me is, is much more important than being able to treat it once it does happen. So I wanna talk about management right now for patients that we've put in a moderate to high risk assessment category based on their preoperative findings and the procedure we're about to do. And it's a list of things that you can, you can choose from, almost like a menu, and decide what you wanna do for your patient. And there are a few of those that we really think are very important, and I'll stress that when we get to those. So when we're thinking about a patient who's moderate to high risk, one of the first things that I think about, and to me this is important, is to schedule enough time that I can give the patient breaks to rest their jaw. So instead of doing their appointment in the minimum amount of time I can get it on the schedule, I know ahead of time I'm gonna to need to stop and let them close and rest their jaw, and I've gotta schedule that time in so that that appointment is not stressful for them or stressful for us as a dental team. As part of being able to take those rest periods, I really need feedback from the patient. So I'm gonna invite the patient to tell me, raise their hand or get my attention or the assistant's attention if they feel like they need a break, that it's time to rest their jaw. I can also think about having that patient rest their jaw on a device like a quick splint. So when I think about a patient at risk for jams, a quick splint is really at the top of my list of incredible tools that help manage, prevent, and treat. Um, if I have the opportunity and I've actually done the risk assessment before the restorative appointment, I will actually make that patient a quick splint and I will send them home with it. And I will actually ask them to sleep in that quick splint for several nights before their appointment so that when they come in, they're already coming in with those muscles a little less fatigued and everything a little bit calmed down. And then I'll ask them to bring that quick splint with them. Whether they're bringing it in from home or I'm making it the day of their restorative appointment, I actually like to make that at the front end of that appointment. So in those rest periods, I can actually have them rest on their quick splint. And that's a device that's designed to make the back teeth not touch, which decreases the activity of the elevator muscles and therefore is giving those muscles the maximum benefit of resting as well as taking some load off of that jaw joint. And then I'm always gonna send my patients at moderate to high risk of developing jams home with a quick splint. And we're actually gonna give them some specific instructions that we can get along with the quick splint that tell them to wear that device as much as they can in that first seven days after the appointment, to then go to nighttime use in that second week. And part of that for me will be, we're gonna invite that patient back. We're gonna be intentional about recalling them for a seven day post-op appointment. Because one of the challenges of jams is that when patients develop it, they don't call their dental office and come back to see us. Most of them end up in an urgent care or at an ER at their primary care physician. They get caught up in that system of trying to get rid of their symptoms. And instead of speed to treat, by the time they end up in, back in the office of the dentist or a TMD or, or a facial pain specialist, we now have a chronic problem. So I wanna be intentional. Another way to be intentional is to follow up, have a post-op call. So whether you make that as the, as the dentist or you have a member of your team call the patient the next day or two days out and just check in with them and ask how they're doing and even ask some of the same questions you did on the JAMS assessment questionnaire to find out whether or not they're starting to have any early symptoms of JAMS that gives us that chance to speed to treat and get in there efficiently and effectively. There are some other things that I do on my list. One I wanna to touch on is gonna sound counterintuitive, but it's very important. And that's for patients at moderate to high risk of jams, we don't wanna work with a bite block. I know it sounds counterintuitive because you're already imagining these are the patients who have trouble opening their mouths and their lower jaw could be a little shaky and it makes what we do challenging. Unfortunately, working on a bite block now is gonna isolate those muscles. It's gonna hold them in that contracted space. Um, they have much higher likelihood of those muscles now spasming and having inflammation. It also eliminates some of the obvious visual cues that we would experience if the patient needs a break, like their mandible trembling a little bit or them having an increased problem holding their mouth open as well as it doesn't give the patient that opportunity to give us that feedback. So if it is a patient that you're worried about, 
whether or not they can open. And those patients may be in your high-risk assessment. That's a place where you might want to actually treat that patient or manage that patient ahead of the restorative appointment so that you can eliminate a lot of those problems and then do your restorative appointment where you can do it without feeling the need to use a bite block. There are some other things we can now think about from a management strategy. One that comes to mind for me is having the patient premedicate with four to 600 milligrams of an anti-inflammatory an hour before their appointment. So you could use over-the-counter medications to do that, like Advil, Aleve, Ibuprofen, or you could write them a prescription, as well as giving them the instructions following their appointment to make sure that they stay on something anti-inflammatory. And I do know that that will also manage some pain, but we really are thinking about it from an anti-inflammatory perspective. We can also think about things like heat and ice or hot packs and cold packs. Those are things we can do in our office, often for us when we have a patient who we already know is at risk of jams. We're already prepared that when we're taking our breaks, um, we're gonna ask them and we might apply some warm, moist heat. We might give them a heat pack that we do in the microwave, or we also might alternatively apply a cold pack for them. Um, and I typically ask them which of those they think is gonna feel most comfortable. So that can be management during an appointment as well as management after an appointment. So lots of strategies to start thinking about. There are also some advanced devices that you can look into that actually support the patient's lower jaw. So that if you are doing a procedure where you're gonna put a lot of downward pressure, especially in a high-risk patient, you can actually support their mandible. Um, and I'm sure there are other things that you can think of as you go through this that you're already, as I'm talking, thinking, you know what, if I did this, I bet that would work. You know, Often, if a patient has an occlusal appliance, you might invite them to bring their appliance with them, and they can actually put their own appliance in during those rest periods. So you could see we could kind of brainstorm about this, but I want you to definitely make sure that once you know the risk assessment, you're thinking about have enough time, make sure you've factored in rest periods, you've factored in the ability for the patient to give you that feedback. You're gonna send them home with a quick splint and instructions for how to manage things over that first seven to 14 days after the appointment. And we're gonna make sure we have a way to check in with that patient so that if they are developing any early symptoms, we catch it as quickly as possible.